Hey guys, welcome to the Cyberspace VR. Today we're really excited to get to talking to you, but first, got to throw in this little small plug. Please subscribe so that we can keep you updated with everything that's going on in the virtual reality world. Um, Hit and that bell icon too, that would be pretty rad. Exactly, that'd be awesome. Anyway, let's jump into today's topic. Yeah, today should be really cool. Um, Black Friday is quickly approaching, and this, if you aren't into VR yet, or maybe you're looking to upgrade your build a little bit, this is literally the best time in the whole year to do so. The deals are gonna be insane. The savings is gonna be even insaner. So we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, like the best way to do a, P uh, how can I say this? A laptop VR build. And we're gonna try and help you do it the cheapest way if you wanna get the cheapest build out there. What the minimum requirements are for you to really take advantage of the VR experience with a laptop. Right, when you're buying a laptop for VR, there's a lot of things to consider that you don't normally have to with a normal PC, or at least it's not something that you like absolutely have to pick apart. So for example, when you're choosing a laptop for VR, you have to make sure that you understand which headset or headsets that you're planning on using, as well as like the, um, like the requirements for mobility and things like that. So for example, if you wanted to have a laptop and then run the Rift S, you're gonna have different needs than if you wanted to have a laptop that can use the link cable with the Quest. Um, so the reason why you need to do that is because every laptop has different ports on it. And this is something that you could easily forget about, right? So you could buy your laptop and get your Rift S and you're like, oh shoot, my laptop doesn't have a display port. And you do not want to run an adapter when you're running VR. We've tried it before, it can get really messy. Yeah, and you know, maybe some of you will disagree with this, maybe you do it and it works just fine for you yep. guys, but when we had our HTC Vive, we had an adapter with it, we tried to make it work, sure, it worked sometimes, but the inconsistency is so tedious, especially if you play VR a lot and you're setting it up a lot yep. and it's not working a lot, gosh, it, it seriously is so frustrating. So that is one important thing. And really quickly, I'm just gonna throw a disclaimer in here at this point. Uh, there's a lot of different ways a, to, to build a laptop to make it run VR. There's a lot of different ways and your opinions might differ a lot, especially if you're really tech savvy, maybe you've done this yourself. Right. Um, so if you disagree or have a different build, feel free to let us know in the comments. Tell us what you would do how you would approach this, how you would, what are your minimum requirements? What's the best case scenario for putting in, for parts putting in and um, Frankensteining it into a laptop for VR? Let us know. But just because our opinions might differ and we might see things a little bit differently, doesn't mean you should dislike the video. Let's just have a nice healthy conversation in the bottom yep. of this video in the comments and find a really good case scenario to provide a lot of value to the, to the viewers here right. that are really looking to build their own laptop and, and get a great VR. VR set going. Yeah, and like most of the time, you're not gonna want to open up your laptop and add RAM or whatever. Um, so I'd really recommend just looking for those Black Friday deals, seeing what's good for your budget, your price point, and figuring it out. But let's go through some minimum specs. Um, so I would say that you need at least a 1660 Ti in a laptop to run VR, and that's low end. I would recommend getting anything better that you can, but that's gonna let you run most games and you'll be fine. Um, you're not gonna be able to run uh, a valve index at 144 hertz all the time with a, with a laptop unless you buy something that's basically a desktop that you can put in your backpack yeah. um really if you're looking to do a laptop build you're you're not going to get the best frame rates you're not going to get you know the highest highest fidelity video you know like you're gonna be making some sacrifices especially if you're going for the cheap end of the spectrum so you need a 1660 ti at least i would say an eighth gen cpu preferably an i7 um Let's see what else. Oh, uh, I would definitely have 16 gigs of RAM um, just because that's the direction we're going in, right? The games are getting more resource heavy and 16 gigs will set you up for the future. Um, that's something that you can upgrade in the future if you do only put eight in, but I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even play with that. Get 16, that's your minimum. Um, I would put an SSD in there just for ease of use. Um, you can't, with a desktop, it's almost okay to have a hard drive because it's sitting there and it can actually be just sleeping. But with a laptop, you're usually shutting it down when you put it in your backpack. And if you have an SSD, it's a faster boot and you'll have better battery life because you won't have to leave it sleeping in your backpack. You can shut it all the way down. Okay, so I'm not the tech savvy guy here. I'm probably more like you are as the viewer watching this video where I don't know as much unless you're tech savvy as well. So that to me is something I, I don't understand a lot. I hope that helps you. I'm gonna ask a few questions so that we can kind of dive into that and get a bit better understanding so you can make the right decision. So my, my first question for you, Sean, would be, 
let's pretend Black Friday wasn't approaching. Everything you just said, how much would that cost typically? Um, you're looking at 1500 bucks. 1500 bucks, 1500 yeah. bucks for a laptop. Um, I, my question would be as a viewer, can I just buy something with that hits all those requirements on Amazon? Is yeah. That relatively easy to do. Yeah, you totally. I mean, yeah, there's lots of stuff made by Acer, Alienware, whatever. You, you you're not going to build your own laptop. Like, okay. With a P when you're building a PC, yes, you, you can pick, you can pick the it. parts. And even then you can find pre-built that have all those requirements. They make sacrifices on things like the CPU cooler, the power supply, um, all those, the motherboard is usually pretty cheap. They're, they make sacrifices. They can give you a cheaper all around build, but it's not going to last a long time. Gotcha. But a laptop, usually they have the best manufacturer that they can in a small space. Um, and, and it's, it's actually a pretty good value. I mean, okay. $1,500 for a VR ready, uh, laptop is pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. So black Friday's coming $1,500. If it wasn't black Friday, how much do you think our viewers could save? on a really good deal like cyber like, monday something you know? they might be able to see one for 1200 you think? 12 yeah 1200 if, if you're lucky okay. um pay attention make sure here's what i would do i would make a list of things that you really want so um there's certain brands that people look out for and they say oh that's not a good one like um, i know a lot of people don't like msi um alienware has issues it's kind of the generic one that i would like me is not a tech savvy guy who doesn't really know the industry that well with laptops. That's the one that I always see in the ads, but it almost feels like it's too good to be true. It's type the thing. too good to be true. Yeah, they, they they go more for like the the visual appeal, but the the interior is not quite right. as good I, as it seems. I personally, I would go with an ASUS laptop. That's okay. just what I would do. What companies do with Black Friday is they try and take the models that they made last year that maybe sold really well or whatever that they have a lot of stock of, and they try and clear them out. So they're gonna take last year's laptop that was their flagship and then they're gonna budget it cut the price by however much so that they can make some room in the market for their new laptops so they're not competing with themselves so you're gonna be looking at laptops that came out you know fairly recently but like last year that are not outdated necessarily but that maybe the company's looking to sell upgrades so they'll take that laptop discount it so i would Find a laptop that sold, has sold pretty well over the past year that's maybe in the $1,500 range and then see if you can find a deal for that laptop that's two or $300 cheaper if possible. Maybe you don't luck out like that. Maybe it's only a hundred bucks off. Um, and if so, that's okay, right? Like yeah. if it's the laptop you want, you like the look of it, you like the specs and you know that the brand's reputable, then Should it's not that big of a deal. And here's the thing. A lot of the people who are gonna watch this video are gonna see it after Black Friday's happened. So. It, yep. that's just how it's going to be you might not be able to find a cool deal that's saving you hundreds of bucks that's okay you know you're still going to get an awesome awesome laptop that's going to be able to run vr and give you an awesome experience right. so that's really cool that's really important um, um yeah go ahead a another question that uh, people i've seen ask online is can i run vr for under a thousand for under a thousand dollars on a laptop and honestly i'd say no um you could probably you could probably find a laptop that'll boot up the Rift S that'll run it at least very minimally, right? And that's okay, but really that's not gonna last you very long. It's gonna be a major heavy load on that laptop. It's not gonna last very long. Yeah. You're gonna overheat it. It's gonna have frame rate drops. It's gonna be a mess. Don't bother getting a thousand dollar laptop. If, you're, if you want to play VR and that's your main goal, save a little bit, wait a little longer. Heck, maybe even buy a cheaper headset, you know, Buy a used headset and get a better laptop. That's you're gonna, probably the better the better way to go. Right. Yeah. You're gonna be happier with yourself in the end. I would look, sit down and say, okay, I, this is my budget. I want to spend eighteen hundred dollars on a headset and on my PC. Where can I make some compromises? So I'd say you can get a used Rift S for fairly cheap, right? Like mm -hmm. people are kind of, I mean, well maybe I don't know. Things are kind of getting weird because they're discontinuing the Rift S. So um, maybe it won't be that that way but maybe you want to get a deck of gear when that comes out next year for 450 bucks pretty cheap yeah um, that's a good headset we'll see so yeah um i guess so going back to the specs could you just really quickly give us another overview of what the specs are right to look out for and uh tell us which one which one's the most like if you had a little bit of extra budget to put towards one of them which one would like would it be the graphics absolutely the ram so go ahead yep. and kind of absolutely the graphics card if you're going to be spending extra money anywhere it's the graphics card make sure that you upgrade that specifically right you want a better graphics card um 
everything else isn't going to be your bottleneck for VR. The graphics card has to handle all, the majority of that load. Um, if you're a gamer, if you've built a computer, you know that, you understand that. Obviously, don't like make sacrifices in terms of the CPU. Like if you are buying like the best graphics card in the world, you don't wanna make sacrifices on the CPU, especially in a laptop where you can't upgrade things later, right? You wanna have something that's gonna last for a while that you, you know, you, you can't upgrade. You can't change your graphics card. You can't change your CPU. I mean, some laptops can, but they're bulky and, and it's a mess. So just make sure that you are buying a laptop right now that will work. If you want to spend a little bit of money now and then with the intention of upgrading later on, get a desktop PC. Okay. And for in reality, like if you want to get into VR, I'd recommend getting a desktop anyway. It's gonna end up being cheaper. You're gonna end up saving money in the long run because you can upgrade it. Um, it, it it's gonna be stationary anyway because you need cables and things like that. If you want a um, valve index, you need base stations. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. The, the advantage that I see with a laptop for a lot of people would be the mobility, mm -hmm. right? And being able to take that power and that capacity. Like if for college students, for example, Yep. that's my brother's about to start college pretty soon here. And instead of getting like replacing his old desktop with another newer desktop and, re and re rebuilding it and things like that, he decided to go for the laptop route. And it's a pretty dang good laptop. Mm -hmm. And he can play games on it, plays his League of Legends plus... Uh, you know, can, Valorant, Valorant, Overwatch, and, all the things. And Overwatch and all those things. Plus he can take it to class, yep. you know? So, so there's a lot of advantages to having a laptop. So we understand, and that's why we're making this video so that you as the viewer can be like, hey, laptop's the route that I need to go for my circumstances. How can I make it run VR? And that's how. Yep. Focus on those specs, the things that Sean mentioned. If you need to go back to earlier in the video, you can maybe give us another quick uh, review of what it is just to wrap sure. up. Sure, 1660 Ti for your graphics card, eighth generation CPU, um, Intel. Uh, anyway, I would just go with Intel at this point. Um, a lot of people are doing AMD, and you can look up comparison charts for that. But eighth generation, I'd say i7, but you can go with an i5. We run i5s in some of our machines. Um, well, oh yeah, uh, definitely 16 gigs of RAM, an SSD preferably and most laptops come with that stock these days they don't even run hard drives but um if you want to have a lot of games you can have both some will actually have an ssd slot and a hard drive for the you want an ssd for the uh oh my gosh for the windows install and then the hard drive can hold all the games and that way you can save a little bit of battery life with starting up and shutting down your computer yeah. um so remember yeah. these are pretty much the minimum requirements if you've got some extra room for budget you're gonna you're gonna find a lot of value in upgrading things. And remember, focus, yep. if you got the extra budget, put it towards the graphics card. If you got a lot more than 1500 in your budget, then just do everything Sean said, but just a, a tier or two above it. Exactly. A little bit better is just gonna make your experience much more crisp, much more clean. It's gonna give you much more ca capabilities with headset choice, so you can yep. really utilize Valve Index if you upgrade. What we're saying right now is good for running headsets like the Rift S, things like that, they're a little lower right. tier, uh, and still, that's pretty much still the minimum for it. So exactly. That kind and, of, yeah. and just remember, to, if you're buying a laptop, pay attention to what ports are on your laptop, right? If, you, if it's a Rift S, you need a display port and a USB 3.0, which uh, most laptops will have, or at least a mini display port, and I think you can run that still. Um, if you want to run the Quest with the link cable, you need just a USB-C. Uh, there's a, every headset is different. So just pay attention to what's going on, what headset needs what ports, and then you can plan that way and you can get your laptop accordingly. And then you can go and play some VR and kill some virtual people or whatever you want to do. Whatever you got. <laughs> so yeah, avoid those adapters. Yeah, you might be able to get it to work with an adapter if you really, really need to, but we're just saying we're washing our hands of this one because you could just find it to be really tedious over the years. So. We, we've had issues. So like we have direct experience with adapters. Yeah. It can be messy. Um, it can be really frustrating. VR is already, you have to troubleshoot it quite a bit. Right, you're yeah. gonna be troubleshooting. And if you are a laptop, if you wanna get a laptop, chances are you wanna be a little bit hands off with the tech stuff. You don't wanna build your computer, whatever. Um, and I may be generalizing there, but seriously avoid a, an adapter if you can. So that wraps it up, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us at the Cyberspace. Got some cool stuff heading your way very soon. So hit that subscribe button, turn on that little bell notification to get notified when we are pumping out new stuff. And yeah, if you disagree, let us know. What have you done? What laptop experience have you had with VR? And how's it worked out for you? 
you recommend it, you prefer desktop, let us know in the comments and feel free to like this video. That gives us a lot of motivation to keep on going. Absolutely. So this is a, the Cyberspace VR and we'll see you next time.